Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn your Ruby on Rails app into an Android mobile app. It's gonna be really exciting. I'm gonna go over the Turbo Android framework, how you can set it up, and we should be able to do this pretty quick. It's gonna be really exciting. Let's get right into it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the Ruby on Rails app. So I'm gonna open the terminal. All right, now that we're inside of the terminal, I'm gonna type in Rails new, and then I'll put the name of our app. So I'll just call it Android blog. So I think I'll just do a simple like blogging app. And then for the options, I'm going to set the database to use PostgreSQL because that's the one that I have set up. And for the CSS, I'm going to set it to Tailwind just so that it makes it look a little bit prettier. And I'll press enter to run it and it's going to generate the whole app for us. All right, now that this has finished, I can CD into the app. The first thing that I'm going to do is create the database. Since I'm using PostgreSQL, you need to do this first. Uh, and then we can start the server by typing in bin slash dev, which will allow us to view this app at localhost colon 3000. And now you see that we have the Rails logo, which means everything's set up and we're ready to start coding. So I'll go back in the terminal and I'm gonna generate our simple model. So I'm gonna do that with a scaffold command. I'll do Rails G scaffold post. I'll give it a title, a body of rich text, and then also an image, which will be type attachment. And then from here we can migrate the database. Well, we also have to run Rails Action Text colon install. Just add the migrations for Action Text and Active Storage. And then we can migrate the database. And now we can restart the server by typing in bin slash dev again. Go back to here. We don't see anything different because we need to set the root. But if we went to the URL and went to slash posts, you'll see that we do have this nice post page. And it's already mobile responsive, so you can resize it and it looks good. So I'm just gonna post post right here. And we don't really have to worry about this too much, but I'm just showing you that this is a simple Rails app. Now real quickly, I'm gonna set the root so that we don't have to go to slash post in the URL. To do that, we're gonna first open up the code. So I'm gonna open it up in Visual Studio Code Editor. And inside of here, I'll go over to config routes.rb and I'll just uncomment the last line and it's already set to post index. So once you do that, your app will be routing to post index as the root. So if we go back into the browser and reload, we'll see that the main page is this post page and we create our posts and do everything. All right, so that's what we're gonna do for, like that's it for the Ruby on Rails app. I'm just keeping it really simple. So from here, to turn your Ruby on Rails app into an Android mobile app, it's super simple. So the first thing you need is Android Studio. If you don't already have it, you can just do a quick Google search for Android Studio and then click the first link, the official Android website, and then download uh, Android Studio. And then you can run through the installation process, get everything set up. And once it is set up, you're able to open up Android Studio just like this. And then what we're gonna do is up here, we're gonna create a new project. So you might see something like this when you first load up. And what we can do is, let's actually do no activity. And then we can press next. Now we have to name the app. So I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna name it like Turbo Android Blog. And there's a few other things like package name. You can change this if you want. I'm just gonna leave it at the default. Language should be Kotlin. And then the minimum SDK should be at least 26. So you can't do anything earlier than 26. And it says your app will run on approximately 95% of devices. So that's pretty good, you know. And then for the build configuration language, uh, we should leave it as Kotlin DSL. This is the newer version. You can do Groovy DSL, but uh, you should use Kotlin DSL because that's what the docs are updated to use right now. And then we can just click finish. It's going to generate our Android app. All right, perfect. And now everything's looking good here. And I'm going to be using the docs from the Turbo Android GitHub project. So what we need to do is we need to add the hotwire dependency into the build Gradle file. So to do that, we can go over here into our app and open up Gradle scripts. And then we're gonna put it in the module level, not the project. We can do that all the way at the bottom in this dependency section, hotwire, and then we have to put the latest version. 
which as of now is 7.1.3 and it actually shows it on the github 7.1.3 and then also we need to add permissions for internet access so to do that you take this line right here and add it into your android manifest so that's up in manifest android manifest just drop this in and now our app is able to access the internet Then I'm going to head over to the quick start guide, which has some cool examples that'll help us get set up. So the first thing we need to do is create this class main session nav host fragment, which is just the most basic fragment that you can have in your app. So right now we have nothing inside of our code. So if you look in Kotlin plus Java, this is the main folder for our whole app. And right now it's empty, so you can't even get into it. What we're going to do is create a new Kotlin class file, main session nav host fragment. We'll create that class and then I'll just drop this content in where we're importing from Hotwire and we're creating a class. So right now we're seeing some issues here like it doesn't it can't really find this package. So you can go up here to this elephant icon to sync the Gradle files and that's basically like doing a bundle install in a Rails app. It'll install all the dependencies from the build Gradle and now we do have Hotwire but all of these red things we need to manually import. So to import it, I just hover over it and then I press Alt Enter. And it's just importing these from the different places. So we're gonna import each of these and then it's adding the import statement up to the top. All right, so turbo path configuration. We're gonna import it. Fragment, yeah, we wanna import this. And now for web fragment, that's actually a class that we're going to create inside of here. So we can just do that right now. We can say new column class file, and then we're going to do our web fragment. And for a web fragment, it's going to be right down here. The most default basic web fragment will just look like this. There's not really anything inside of it. And then make sure that for each of these classes, you have to import all of the things that you're referencing. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our layout file. So it's the Turbo Activity layout, and this is where our app is gonna get rendered. So to do that, we're gonna come into the res folder. And right now we don't even have a layouts folder, so we have to create that. We can go up here to new, I think just directory, layout. And then I'll do a new layout resource file. And we'll call it main activity. And then inside of here, we're going to put that code from here. Or they actually called it activity main. <laughs> I always put it the other way around. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to just call it, act I'm going to call it main activity. Okay, so inside of main activity, we're trying to reference the main session nav host fragment. So it's trying to, it's already like using the hotwire package. So we don't want to do that. We want to reference our local one. So to do that, we have to use our name, which is com.example. Whoops. Dot turbo Android blog. And as soon as you start typing that, it'll give you a suggestion. Just make sure that you have it like this. Now, when it's green, it means that it's working and it, it's able to find the reference. So this looks good. Then we also need to create the turbo activity class. So we're gonna create a class called main activity inside of this folder with the rest of our classes. So we're gonna create a new column class, main activity, paste this code in here and then also import all the dependencies. So I don't know if there's an easier way to import all of the ones cause that would kind of make sense but I haven't found it yet. And then where we're setting the content view that's where it's looking for the name of our file. So see, it's looking for activity main, but I called it main activity. So I'm just gonna do main activity. And then just like this, everything's looking good. Uh, so also we need to have a path configuration file. Cause if we go back to this main session Napos fragment, uh, we actually don't want the remote file URL because this will make the app break because this file actually isn't available anymore. I don't know why we have to delete that. 
and it's just going to look for a local JSON file. So let's go ahead and create that JSON file. So to do that, we first need to add an asset directory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on our app, press new, and then I have to add the asset directory. Let me remember where this is, folder. So if you go down to folder and then assets folder, it's a, it creates a source root for assets, which will be included in the APK. That's what we want, so we'll say finish. Now we have another folder called assets. Inside of here, I'm gonna do a new directory, call it JSON. And inside of JSON, I'm gonna do a new file and I'll call this configuration.json. Inside of configuration.json, you can put your uh, configuration just like this. And you'll see that this is where you can put all your rules. So you can have certain pages pop up in modals and things like that, which will make the experience a lot better. So right now we're just putting all of them to go to the turbo fragment web and that's fine. That'll just make our app work and they'll all go through the web fragment, which will just render the full page on the screen. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is add some more configuration to our Android manifest. So we've already added the permission for internet access and that's good. But we also need to add uh, this option on the application, Android use clear text traffic. So if you don't add this, then when you try to use localhost in your app, uh, it's actually gonna throw an error and it's, it's gonna be really annoying. That happened to me the other day. I was confused until I saw you have to set this uses clear text traffic to true and then it'll work fine. Now we also have to add in our activity because I said, because when I did the generator, I said no activity. We didn't have an activity set in our Android manifest. So we have to add one of these activities and then we're going to set the name, which is going to go to the main activity. Then we also have our Android theme. So this is kind of important. This is the theme that our app uses. And you'll see that this is not set up correctly because this was for my other app. I'm just using it as an example. So to find your theme, go over to res and then there should be themes. Okay, if you go to values and you go to themes, themes.xml, we're gonna use this one. So the theme material components and you'll see it has this dark action bar. This is actually gonna look pretty bad, uh, but I just wanna show you so you can see like, I'll show you how to fix that after, how to remove that top action bar. So then in the Android theme, we're just gonna do it, instead of having this theme here, we're gonna put our theme, which looks like this. Actually, you know what? Uh, so what you do is you take the name of the theme, because this is your custom theme, and then it's inheriting from this material components day and night theme, which looks pretty good. We'll take our custom name and then you can customize all of these colors inside, which is pretty nice. Then we'll go back to the Android manifest and we're going to add our theme right here. So say like at style slash our theme name. And then boom, just like that, we're ready to run our app. So our whole app is ready. It's configured and it's ready to go. The only thing is our start location is set to the demo app. So to change that, so it loads up our local server. All we have to do is add this URL right here, HTTP colon slash slash 10.0.222. And the reason why we have to do something like this is because if you try to use local host inside of an emulator, it's not gonna work. So you have to use this Elias, which will port over this IP address over to your local host. And just like that, we're ready to start our app. So I'm gonna press play. You see very quickly it loads up and we have a working Turbo Android app. Fully working, we can create new posts. Create a post just like that. We can go back to posts. And we even have this nice back button up here. Although you notice like, it looks pretty bad because why do we have two nav bars, right? You guys would probably wonder that. I wondered that when I first created my app. I was like, wait, why is there two? And the reason being, it actually stems back from our theme. So right up here inside of the theme file, we have this parent dark action bar. And the dark action bar actually is like this top thing. That's an action bar. 
So if we want to remove that, what we're going to do is change the theme. Instead of dark action bar, it will be no action bar. And then we can reload and see what that looks like. So with no action bar, it actually looks a lot better. We just have this simple bar up here and then we can create a new post. And that's probably how you guys would want if you still want the back button and everything. So you can show a post, you can edit posts. Yeah, this is great. So you have their posts, you still have the back buttons and everything's working just as we'd expect. We already have a working Turbo Android app. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was pretty short, I just wanted to keep it simple. And in future videos, I'll show you how to connect Strata, how to add custom bottom navigation bars, and just get more in detail.